episode 49 of the Beardcaster. My name is Scott Sakura and I am the Beardcaster. <laughs> Welcome to a podcast all about beards and mustaches, beard culture, and all the stuff that goes along with it. Hear the stories from the people and learn the tricks of the trade on how to grow and maintain your style with advice taken from our personal experiences. It's all about the facial hair lifestyle we live and our daily lives in the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me Scott, the Beardcaster, as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. Visit me at thebeardcaster.com. You can find direct links to all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can subscribe on all the platforms easily at my website. Thank you for joining me. Once again, my name is Scott. You found the podcast, The Beardcaster. Thank you for joining me today. So excited to have you here. I know. I feel like I'm going through puberty right now. My my voice is all cracking and stuff. Oh, I don't know what's going on. A little burpy today, but... I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Like, I feel like we're at the fair and you all came to see me today, but no, we're, we're listening to a podcast. And... For those of you who are unaware, you can easily go to any of your podcatchers, iTunes, if you are an Apple person, or, hey, you, iHeartRadio. I'm on iHeartRadio. Can you believe that? Yeah. All you have to do, if, if you go to iHeartRadio, on one of your apps, you just type, search in The Beardcaster, and you can find me. Subscribe there, and you can keep up to date on all my episodes. Oh, it's so easy. It's ridiculous. So just do it. Just do it. And by some chance, if if any of you are interested, I have a Patreon page. And for those of you who are unaware of what that is, it's, it's kind of like a little donation page. So if by some chance you're feeling a little generous and you want to help me out by help giving me a few dollars or a dollar a month to help me produce the show, I'd greatly appreciate it. I have so many things I want to do with the show and you know it's a little bit here and there can help I mean it's not a super expensive endeavor on my part but the things that I want to do like a lot more traveling and going to shows and talking to people that's where the that's where my patreon page is going to help me out because those of you who like what I do and support what I do you know if you're willing to at least share a dollar a month with me it, it gets me a little bit closer to doing more things that are going to be more beneficial to you and entertaining to you. So, if, hey, if you feel like it, you know, you just my Patreon page, you can just go, like I said, to thebeardcaster.com and there'll be a, a link at the very, just scroll down. There'll be a thing that says Patreon. You click on that and it'll go right to my page and you can select however much you want. If I, if you want to do like a nickel. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Nickel, that's fine. You can, or you can just save that nickel and scratch your lottery ticket off next month. But let's get right into this because this is a good one too. So today, or not today, but I, I interviewed, we'll just say it that way. I interviewed a wonderful man named Raymond Weitzel, who is from Dayton, Ohio. And he is the a wonderful man. Well, I'll just put it that way because after I talked to him, he is a wonderful man with a humongous heart. And Ray and I got hooked up a, f- a few months ago. Uh, he he does an oil company called Sinful Beard Oil and Balms. And he contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying some of his stuff out. And I was like, of course. And he wanted to know what I was into. Uh, not like, I mean, what kind of sense I was into, not if I was like into like any other weird stuff, but, uh, so he wanted to know what sense I was into and I consulted with my wife and, you know, she picked a bunch of things out that, that he made and she absolutely loved them. And so as this was all going on, he sent me some oils and then he started organizing a competition. So his competitions are, is called beards against drugs and 
what it is is it's a competition to raise awareness towards uh, drug abuse and, and you'll just have to kind of listen to it but it was a very uh, the the charity is definitely something that really hits home with me because I've had issues in my past with good friends of mine that have dealt with drug abuse and I've lost some friends and like we discussed I think everyone's kind of no matter where they are in their life they've had to deal with drugs you know be it uh, someone they know or someone they're related to or something but it's it's a tough thing and what Ray's trying to do with this whole competition is raise awareness and raise donations is a really admirable thing so definitely check this out um it was really nice talking to him about this and i'm i'm very oh and i'm emceeing the event which is even cooler so i get to be you know right up front with with everyone and that to me i'm just that may i'm very, i feel very proud to be a part of this event because it's such a big deal and like i said it's a big deal to me too because you know, as you listen, you know, you'll find out that my wife was involved in stuff and I've been involved with stuff too. So it's a very personal topic. So, but definitely listen. And uh, another thing I wanted to really quickly talk about before we uh, got into the episode, but this past weekend, I, I had the luxury of traveling to Columbus, Ohio and uh, hanging out with the Can You Handlebar guys at a beauty expo at in, uh, at the convention center and basically what it was was uh, it, it was like a two day convention for hairstylists or women who own salons uh, hairstylists or whatever to come and check out different kinds of products and stuff and uh, Can You Handlebar had set a booth up there and they had asked me if I wanted to come down and I was like of course you know so I went down and I have never been so stunned in my life by going to something like this. Number one, I've never been to a hairstyling convention. So that was pretty, pretty, or a beauty expo. And and I was pretty surprised about how it all was and everything. But uh, by far, these guys had the most amazing booth at the entire event. It was a whole afternoon of just wall to wall people, just holy cow, what do you what do you what is the product and just wanted to take pictures of matt cox and brian furby and his huge beard and it it was just really amazing to see how just amazed these women were at what we were doing and what the products were and it was so cool to like you know talk one-on-one with a lot of these women who were interested in either you know, carrying the products at their shop or it was, you know, oh, my boyfriend said to bring him something back from this weekend. And, and, you know, of course, we were one of the only booths in the entire thing that were really catering towards men's products and stuff. But uh, it was just really interesting to talk to all these women and try to explain, you know, how amazing the Can You Handlebar products are and what a benefit that they're significant other would have by using their stuff and and on top of that i learned a lot more about the products between the oils and the the uh um dry oils and it it was it was a learning experience for me not only about the products but just dealing with you know questions and and you know people wondering about the product so it was a lot of fun and it was a very, very eventful weekend with that. So, but if you by some chance are interested in more information about Can You Handlebar, you can go visit them at canyouhandlebar.com. And as I've keep promoting over and over and over again, and as I did when I was at the convention this weekend, the dry oil by far is one of the most amazing, amazing, amazing products that I've ever tried. And we had so many women buying the brushes and the tins of dry oil and, you know, just trying to explain to them the benefits of how good it is for your skin and how good it is for the hair and how it just promotes like proper hair growth and 
proper maintenance that, you know, the things that you need to continue growing a wonderful beard. So, like I said, if you go to canyouhandlebar.com, you know, check them out. Uh, and, you know, if you're interested in picking something up, please, by all means, use the coupon code TBM15 to get 15% off your next purchase at Can You Handlebar. Please go check them out. I, I can't talk highly enough, and I know it probably is getting annoying now, but it, you know, when you find something that just literally like changes your life, and it's not only the product that changed my life, but it's the company. It's the way they are. It's not just the product, but their personal touch with the customer. It's their personal touch with the potential customer. And it's just how they handle everyday business and how welcoming they are into their community, into their lifestyle, into their business. And to me, that's what speaks the biggest about them and why I am going to be stuck with these guys forever and ever. And and for those of you who've been listening to this, I'm not endorsed by them. They don't pay to sponsor me or anything. I just believe in the product that much that I'm willing to, you know, give them this time right now to promote their product because I think it is that great. I believe in it. I believe in their company. I believe in their workers. I believe in everything about them as being a good product, a good company, and providing the best support that you could possibly need. So, like I said, can you handle bar.com? Check them out today. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. So, But you'll be disappointed because I'm not getting to this interview already. So let's just get into this because we're we're really dragging behind on this one. So check out uh, Ray and uh, we'll catch you on the backside. So here we go and action. Today on the Beardcaster, I'm joined by someone who everyone loves. That is correct. I am joined with Raymond. Everyone loves Raymond. Isn't that right? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you hope so. Come on, I hope man. So. I love Raymond. <laughs> so, Mister Romano, let's talk about why you're here today. Uh, oh, well, you, well, you call, you call, you uh, reached out to me and said, "Hey, let's <laughs> uh, let's do an interview." And okay. I was like, "Heck yeah!" <laughs> well, all right. So let let's jokes aside. You are not Ray Romano. You- <laughs> Tell us who you are. <laughs> I'm Raymond White. So I'm with uh, I'm the uh, owner and creator of Sinful Beard Oil and Bombs. All right, very good. And you are also hosting a competition that's coming up very soon. And why don't you tell us what that is? I am the um, originator of Beards Against Drugs. Uh, it's here in Dayton, Ohio. We're uh, putting together this hopefully huge competition for uh to raise money for uh, bridges path and uh nova behavioral health very cool well we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit once we get through a few basic things with you and learn who the real raymond is and why everyone loves you is that cool that's great man that's great that's great you know we're selling this one good we got to sell this one hard man we got to sell it hard we got to get those people out there (laughs) hey man it's a good cause and everyone everyone i know everyone can relate to this topic because everyone has had I, i can almost guarantee everyone's had someone that's been affected by drug use in their life that has turned sour But like I said, we'll get back into that, you know, once we start talking about the competition and stuff. But let's let's get to know who Raymond is. Now, how tall are you? I'm six one. Really? I didn't know they piled shit that high. Oh Yeah, well I've heard that I've heard that a lot, man. Yeah, (laughs) dude. I I gotta start out of the gates hot, man. I gotta start hot. Yeah. Yeah, You caught me off guard on that one. Did see there you go. This is what you're in for for the rest of the night, just to let you know. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that, man. All right. So, you know, at any point you want to throw a zinger back at me, I'll put that zinger right <laughs> in my mouth and bite down on that coconut goodness with that nice cream filling. I like zingers. All right. I like I'll, uh, I'll catch you off guard, though, when I do. Uh, well, you got me off guard, so it's only fair. All right, yeah. Tit for tit, or as they say in the industry of tatting. 
I don't know if that's yeah, the that's tattoo, right. whatever, whatever it is. But okay, so Raymond, you live besides in a house. Where is that house? I live actually outside of uh, Dayton, Ohio. I live in a small township called uh, Lanier Township now. It's uh, my actual address is considered West Alexandria. It's in the middle of BFE. Huh. So, so Dayton, Ohio, for those of you who don't know, yep. that's that Dayton, Ohio is home of the Wright Patterson Air Force Base where they hold the alien bodies from Roswell. Is that not what you've heard? I've heard that. And uh, the funny story is I have my, my, my little brother works out at Wright Pat and Ooh. he told me he, he can't disclose anything. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that's the truth, Scott. That's why they that's why they say that, because there is something to disclose and they just try to throw you off the trail by saying they can't disclose anything because there is something. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, there's got there's got to be. Yeah, if if he's got to sign all this paper when he can't say anything, but that, that's a, that's a, that's probably like a whole another episode of Beardcaster right there is conspiracies. Oh well, that but that's <laughs> that definitely because I actually I try not to fall into those. You no, know, I just listened to a podcast all about the conspiracies at Wright Patterson Air Force Base just so I could be prepared for this episode so I could quiz you on anything you may have heard. But I, we won't go there. We we will definitely save that for another episode. But I just I've very, been very fascinated with Wright Patterson Air Force Base and all the stories and as you say, quote unquote, conspiracy theories around it. But once again, that is another episode all about that. But we're here to talk about beards. We're not here to talk about aliens and UFOs and you UO, uh, and governmental cover up. Even though the signal went bad, and I'm actually thinking the men in black are trying to tap into this conversation right now to hear what we know. I'm starting to see strange lights outside my window. I, I, I hope that's not the case. Man. I hope I hope so not either. So if something happens and Raymond disappears, we know what happened and uh, just we'll call for help immediately. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Raymond, Raymond, answer me this question, sir. Where did your fascination with bearding or growing a beard, getting involved in the whole beard scene, where did that stem from? Where did you find that drive? Where does it come from? Uh, I've always tried to start growing a beard and uh, I've really started pushing it like last year, really started trying to actually grow one out. Uh, um, and I, I, I just started going with it pretty much last year. It's been kind of hard because I've, uh, work in a f field that's usually you want to see a bearded person in. Oh, the stripper industry. But oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I'm one of those um, Chippendale guys, oh. and yeah, they, they prefer guys clean shaven. That's, that's actually how this company started because my beard my beard was so rough, and I made the oil to make my beard soft and it's more acceptable now. Oh, very good. So, no, actually, all kidding aside, what do you do? I am a campus police officer for a hospital in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, wow. That sounds fun. Yes. Have you had to run yes. any perps down lately? That that means perpetrators. I don't know if you are privy to that lingo. Well, I'm definitely privy to that lingo. Oh. What's the <laughs> Very, code What's um, the code for that over the radio? Subject. Oh, dude. Okay. Yeah, we don't say perpetrator or anything like that. It's just a subject, type oh. of subject or... Anything like that, is you know? That, is that more PC? You don't want to offend someone by calling them. Well, up. I don't think I don't I don't think perpetrators. Um, I don't think that's like in politically correct oh. or anything like that. It's just common it was, common lingo for us to say subject. Oh, okay. Tell us a little bit about this this specific position you have hunting down subjects. Now, see, you're making it sound like you're out there hunting aliens and working for the government. See, this is all going to tie together somehow, some way. I will make it happen. Right, Patterson. See, I, 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 I think you've been watching too much. Uh, oh, what was that show? Art. Uh, Mark and Mindy. Well, yeah, Mark and Mindy. That could be it too. But no, I, I can't. I can't even remember it. Oh goodness. Um, 
<laughs> you're, you're throwing me all these uh, curveballs balls out I am. left field. I, curve balls, exactly. I'm trying to keep you on your toes, Ray. I'm trying to keep you on your toes. It's what it's hey, all that's about. A good, that's a good thing. So, someone needs to do it. Yes. Um, uh, it's, it's not really you're running down people. It's pretty much, you know. Subjects. Get it right, sir. <laughs> subjects. That's, you're not, you're not, not running, running subjects. down subjects. Okay. So what, what exactly do you do? What is the nine to five or whatever hours you work? It's pretty much maintaining the peace within within a hospital, which is uh, it's uh, it could be daunting. It could be we never use the word quiet either, especially in the area we're at. That's that's bad juju. Even the nurses and doctors and stuff like that, and they know better not to not to say that too. That's that's kind of like um, a taboo. superstition there. Yes, I, I it will, is a taboo. I will tell you, I I've, I've gotten my my wrist smacked many times by my wife when I've gone in to visit her at work. She's an RN and I've gone in there and been like, wow, man, you guys are really quiet tonight. And then everyone just gets pissed at me. They're like, you can't say that. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't realize that it's yes. taboo to say that. Yes. And then five people fall over dead, like literally like six minutes later. And that's my fault. You know? Well, that's that's pretty bad, man. I don't think you're that bad of a guy, but well, I, that's because you say man. I'm saying the wrong things at the wrong time, and you know, apparently my words just have that effect on people where they just fall over dead. And if, it, if it's in a hospital and you use those words, that that, that could very well be be it, though. That's, okay, that's the thing. So it's- let's let's <laughs> we'll, let's we'll do a deep dive into this. Tell us about the best your best uh story about something crazy that's happened uh, i really can't get into anything with, 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 with be, be, because of it being in a hospital confidentiality hospital. agreements we can change the names and the identities to protect the innocent <laughs> oh goodness <sighs> Okay, if you don't want to go there, that's I, fine. That's fine. You know, that's. You know, I, I mean, I, I'd love to, but it's just you'd have to kill us after we're for, done. For, and, well, uh, no, not necessarily. I just, I, I'm still, I'm still employed there, and prefer to just not not raise any attention on that for anyone who'd happen happen to run across. To okay, it. okay, uh, that's that's a yeah. fair statement. That's a fair statement. But by the end of this episode, I'll get you to spill the beans. Uh, you know. Well, I, I could I could spill the beans off 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 record with you. Anytime. Okay, all right, that sounds good. <laughs> we like records. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. So you started. You okay? You were able to start growing your beard about a year ago, and you definitely have a very nice beard, very unique looking because it's it's a very straight looking beard, which is very unusual for a lot of bearding guys. Because a lot of guys have a lot of natural wave and curl in them, and I know with your beard, you, I don't, I, and I don't know if that's just a result of your product, but you definitely have a very like straight, streamlined looking beard. Now, what got you into like doing the whole product side of like with the sinful beard oil? Well, it's I started messing with beard oils, just like anyone else that starts getting more involved with growing a beard, you know, how, how to like, uh, you know, maintain and take care of your beard properly. And I just, I started messing with different oils and I kind of just got, I wasn't happy with what, what I was getting. And I was also not happy with shit, selling out money, trying all this different stuff. So I, I started tinkering I started doing the research and tinkering with it. All right. So I started just started making my own beard oil. That's that, that's that's how I got into it. I just started tinkering with it. Then from there, I ended up you know with other stuff, and I was I was giving it to friends, and they're like, "Oh, this is really good." So people started offering to buy it. So that, that that's kind of that's kind of how it got it started. I think that's pr- pretty much a typical story. For I don't know, I leave a bunch of other companies out there, but um. That's how it got started. All right, now, you want me did, to keep going? Yeah, no. How how did you come up with the name Sinful? What like where did the name derive from? Um, funny thing is, it's uh, I always I just, my true passion was always music. I've been involved with the local music scene probably for the past four years. Uh, no, twelve to fifteen oh, years oh, actually. Shit, I was off by a lot. Uh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, and um. 
I used to play bass and all that. And I started I started working on a solo project, and I called the project a Agent Center, S Y N N E R, and uh, I started pitching out brand ideas out, out to my friends on Facebook that knew me that. They go. They started pitching back, and one goes, "What about what about just sinful? You should call your product sinful." I was like, "I like that. I like how that flows." And I ran it by my wife, and she liked it, and I just went with it hmm. B- because everyone's sinful one way or another. I'm not. I've never sinned ever in my life. Fact. I find that hard. To, I find that hard to believe. Fact. That is a fact. Okay, I take that back. I did sin. I sinned the other day. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you I fart, did, though. No. You probably, farted, you probably farted on an elevator or something. A, a farted on an elderly? Elevator. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. All right. I don't fart at all, dude. Come on. This, or, this is a family or, program. We don't talk about farting here. Oh, well, then I won't make my other comment then. Oh no, go ahead, please, because we no, might. It's a, it's, a, it's a family. It's a family program. Yes, I'm, I, I, but some families might talk about what you're going to say. Well, I, I was just going to say you you got caught watching female porn or oh, something. Oh, yeah, now see, my family does talk about that, so that that is acceptable for this program. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. No. But no, that is not what happened. But hey, once again, <laughs> once again, we won't go there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That was me laughing like Santa Claus. That was pretty good. Oh, that's great. Okay, so Sinful Beard Oil started out of your basement. Now it's a multi-billion-dollar corporation based out of Dayton, Ohio. Is that, is that correct? Oh, I wish I wish that was the case, Scott, because I, I I'd definitely be giving in to more of a lot of the charities I see that uh, a lot of these other uh, clubs are working on and working with. All right. I really wish that was the case. Yeah. So we had the luxury of meeting a few weeks ago at the Steel City Beard and Mustache Club's Beard for Beast number five at the Rivers Casino in downtown Pittsburgh. And boy, what a delight it was to have met you because you and I have been communicating actually for a few months. And I don't know exactly how the seed was planted with you. And I, I think you might have reached out to me about the beard oil and stuff. And you, you, I, I, I really remember this night, in fact, because you started messaging me, you and I were messaging back and forth, talking about different scents and all these different things. And then I was like emailing my wife at work and I'm like, okay, you know, what sense would you like? You know, I was sending her links to your website and everything. And she's like, oh, pick that one, pick that one. So you sent me all these samples and everything. And my, I mean, my wife absolutely loves them. I mean, she loved every single fragrance that you sent, and I I loved them too, and I still do love them. I'm not saying that I fell out of love with them, but as you and I know, I have a certain issue with beard oils, and right, and I mean, and and a lot of people that listen to the show know that I've I have this issue where it literally every type of beard oil that I use within a matter of a few hours it goes from the nice fragrant to like a real like literally like a, a rotten cooking oil or like a fish smell or something. And right. as we were talking that, you know, I, I responded back to you and I, I you know, I, I'm not going to bullshit anyone that sends me products. And, you know, I let you know that I, I love the smells. My wife absolutely loved the smells. And I even know my wife raved to you when we met. Um, but I, after like a little bit, I had this issue of my beard starting to kind of have that, that, that bad smell. And I let you know, I wasn't going to lie to you and be like, Oh, you know, this stuff was really great and you know, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is that's, that's a, an issue that I have to deal with. And I know that probably tons and tons and tons of people that buy your oils, use your oils, don't have that same problem. And so what does this guy do? He emails me back and he's like, we're going to figure this out. And so you start doing all this research and stuff, and you're like, we're going to make up a new concoction. We want to test it on you to see if we can figure out why everything's like having this adverse effect on you. And when I saw you in Pittsburgh, you were, you know, you were all excited because you're like, I have all this, this new ideas and all these things I want to try with you. And, uh, why don't you explain a little bit about 
you know, what you've kind of discovered in your research on your end about what could be happening with me. I, I just started researching what was in the um, carrier, because you, you're saying it could be something to do with um, I think it's an the effect carrier. with, um, yeah, it was with the carrier oils, but it was going to be a, a reaction with um, something um, that our body natural naturally um, secretes through our pores, uh, sebum. Yes. Sebum. I, I, I hope, hopefully, I'm, I, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that, that right. That is uh, absolutely 100% correct, sir. Not I, really a doctor, but I play one on TV. And I know, um, I know. I was going to say the same thing. I went to college as a sebum expert. Truth. <laughs> really? Truth. Yeah, absolutely. That's what That was my degree. You, want to, you, want, you sure it was sebum? It wasn't yeah. semen? Not se- No, there was the B was in there. Yes, there was a B in there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. See, okay. that was a good sting right there, buddy. That was a good sting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know them college boys and frats. You, you, there's there's oh, some crazy yeah. stuff that goes on. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I was not that type of guy. But yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> go on. We're we're talking about the carrier oils. Yeah. So I I, I started researching and I, I'm I, I'm starting to pinpoint things to see what could be causing a reaction with your second set condition without knowing what 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 condition it could be. So I'm just trying to figure out what be your reaction. And right now I'm currently in the stage. I've got all this stuff. When when you come down to the Dayton on the 28th, it's, I've got it all labeled. It's all laid out right now. Ooh. And we're, we're going to find out wh- which one's going to fix your problem. And if not, there's, I think, I think this might be a mental thing with you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but the best part is it's like, I don't, I mean, I kind of notice it, but it's like the, as soon as I put it in, my wife's like, oh, wow, this, sm-. I mean, I'm not just talking about your product. It, it, it's all of them, but I'll get like a really nice one. And I put it in and my wife's like, oh my God, that's so nice. And then like at the end of the day, I come up to hug her and like, you know, she's a little shorter than me, so her face automatically goes right into my beard. And then that's right. when I, that's the moment I know when it's like bad because she's like, Oh my god. So we haven't hugged in years. I just wanna yeah. hug I just wanna hug my wife and if you can make that happen. Is I, that why she stands is that why she Yeah. She's her wife when purdy. Yeah, I can't get a hug out of my wife because she thinks my beard stinks. Wow. Well, ho- ho- hopefully we'll be resolving that, and w- w- we have the answer, and you'll have your own special little blend made oh, made by me. That'd be awesome. I, I uh, really, I really that's, can't that, wait. That's my plan, man. I, I do, and that's that's why you. I mean, number one, just that whole thing just tickles me and makes me feel wonderful that you you as a as a business owner want to make their customers happy. And number two, when we were in Pittsburgh. I had a bad gin and tonic, and you took it upon yourself to make sure that I got the right gin and tonic. So you grabbed that gin and tonic out of my hand, <laughs> and you took it right back over to that bartender, and you told them no. <laughs> <laughs> and you came back with one that was so damn strong, about knocked me on my ass. So you are about customer relations, my friend, and I greatly appreciate yes, I am. that. Yes, you, I am. you were you were about making everyone happy that night. So, and I also I try, know, man. And, and I and I know that you were also celebrating because that was like one of the first nights that you've gotten out since you've and and this is a congratulations to you since you've become a a a newborn father figure to a baby. And uh, what was it? Uh, three. Well, now it's been five weeks, right? Yes, she's five weeks. She'll be five weeks tomorrow. Very good. So yeah, so you had a, a baby daughter as opposed to a adult daughter. You had a baby, and your wife did. And you right. know, when we saw you in Pittsburgh, you said that you know that was your first time out. So I know you were you were you were letting loose and everything, and it was nice to see that because I know number one, you've been you know under the stress of being a new father. Uh, number two, you know, working on the oil stuff, and number three, working on this competition that we have coming up very soon. Right. And uh, let's let's talk. Let's dive, start diving into the uh, competition now. Um, tell us about. So this is your first competition that you've organized, correct? Correct. Correct. And uh, now, 
obviously there's something that's that's very close to you with the the drug thing. Is there is there a backstory you can tell about that? That and that's why you've designed this competition to benefit that. Yes, yes, it, that that this is a really big backstory, actually. Um, and, and 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 it's in line with my profession, my full time profession. Um, and actually my wife's profession, she's, she's a, she's actually a nurse practitioner. Oh, she's, she's at a different facility as well. Very. That's what my wife's going to school for. So that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, we, 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 we both, um, we both, both been within that field, like within the medical field. Well, I'm not so much medical. I've been in law enforcement for uh, almost 20 years and the past 11 years of it's been at the hospital. Um, and when I first started, a lot, a lot of the issues were, um, mental health, health issues and, um, uh, you know, like family disputes, stuff like that. And as time progresses, we started seeing, you know, we're seeing overdoses like on, um, you know, maybe, maybe like a monthly basis. And it started turning into, um, you know, the past couple of years, things started getting real bad. Um, seeing several over- overdoses in a day, hearing um, the city channel and the county channel going out on 30, 40 calls a day. I mean, it's just... Uh, but what, what got me was I had to deal with an issue with a pregnant individual and it just, um, it tore me apart just, just, just to see that. And, uh, luckily the person survived and, you know, per- person doing that th- their self with, you know, them supposedly, you know, supposed to be bringing life into the world that's that's kind of like a breaking point to me you know because they're all they're just poisoning that baby inside of them right right and it just um you know it, it's different from you know i i could spend all day getting these people locked up or whatnot all day these subjects <laughs> yeah. locked up all, all, all day long and you know and but it's out of my hands there, but that's, that's not, that's not fixing anything. Yeah. And, um, that's why I started, I started, I started doing research, stuff like that on how I can get involved and, in, uh, with the community and trying to find a way to help with this. Okay. So tell me about the, uh, so what are the charities and tell me a little bit about, about them. <clears throat> the charities is, uh, Bridges Path. And they uh, treat, uh, they're one of the first facilities in the United States that treat opioid addicted born babies. And, and I didn't really know that was a thing. Well, I didn't know this facility existed in my backyard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I knew there's that issue. So ended up with them. Because they're they're um, privately funded by uh, just donations, like their whole building and all the everything they have is donated by private money. Oh wow, that's definitely. I mean, this is definitely for a good cause. Then the founder of that uh, organization, because once I started getting involved with this, you know, I was I I was I I want to know everything. I want to know how they um, got started and how they got involved with this and um i posted a video with some of the backstory with it for uh people to also check out what we're actually raising money for but um she was trying to foster kids you know adopt adopt, adoption stuff like that and uh she ended up getting her first kid and it was like three pounds and it was having all kinds of medical issues um uh, related to being a baby going through uh, opioid withdrawal, then uh, I believe they ended up getting like um, fostering like another two, and then back to back, and, and um, they were all um, going through 
the that o- o- opioid uh, withdrawal. Mm-hmm. And she ended up going down to West West Virginia. West Virginia is the only other place that has this type of facility. So that's you know I, I learned about that and I was like, all right, this is what we're going to do here for one of the charities. Very this cool. is going this is going to help the people that don't have a voice in the matter. Yeah, and, and, and it's kind of it's kind of forgotten and it's something that no one's really seen or talking about too, because you know, they're not the ones that being on the news and stuff, you, 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 you know where I'm coming from. Yeah, no. And I, and I'm familiar with it. I've, I mean, I've heard of the issue of the babies being, you know, born that are already addicted to the opiate. Op, ugh, op, op, can you say the word opioid opioid? But uh, yeah, I mean, the babies that are going through withdrawal symptoms and everything when they're born because the mothers were users as they're, you know, through their whole pregnancy and then the drugs just get pumped right directly into the babies. And right. Yeah, you've heard that story, but then you don't hear the stories about how, okay, the baby's born and then what happens then. Correct. So. Definitely, this sounds like a really awesome charity to be working with for this event because, you know, these people are taking that next that next step to help, you know, get the babies past that point. Right. Well, that's I, and yeah. This is I like that a lot. This is that's a very very nice charity to be working with. So, but I will I will also put a link to that in there. So, if you're hearing this and you're interested in finding out more. There'll be a direct link right to their website on my they, show notes. So they'll definitely appreciate that yeah. as well. So okay, what's the uh, what's the other one? Uh, Nova Behavioral Health. All right, what's that about? Um, they they're an actual. They do uh, inpatient uh, re- rehabilitation. They do everything from uh, substance abuse to mental health. But one of the other things they're, 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 they've started and doing is. Um, a transitional housing program. And um, I went out and spoke with the uh, CEO out there that's in, in Dayton. And uh, I, 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 you know, I, but before I went ahead and chose them, because I, I wanted to make sure that this was the right fit and I, this is what I wanted, you know, I want this money to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, I, I sat with him and I talked to him for about an hour and a half and, I mean, what, the, and what they're doing is instead of putting the people that want to get help and get in rehab and they, you know, finish their, um, I, their 12 steps or whichever yeah. way they do it and kick them out the door and say, well, you're done. Yeah. They're actually providing these people with housing, like yeah. rent free housing. Housing and and they they're doing like an after treatment from there and get them um, basically re- to becoming like a productive citizen yeah. again and getting them gainfully employed and everything like that. And I went and talked to um, after after I set this up to go ahead and move forward with the money going towards them is uh, I went and spoke with. Um, for the people that successfully completed the program. And, uh, you know, I gave them my background and tell, told them why I was doing this. And that they, they were like, they were shocked. They were, they, they were like tickled pink because, it's, you know, I told them my background and they're, they're just surprised. I'm trying to come in from the other side to, to help with what, um, these other people in recovery are going through. Well, you're in a unique position because I mean, you and I, and I've had a few friends that have been uh, like local sheriffs in our in our around our county and stuff. And one of my friends actually worked at one of the local hospitals. Who, you know, he was a he transported prisoners and stuff, and he also worked with uh, patients that were you know in for overdoses or whatever. And he would have to sit with these people. And transport them between the jail and the hospital and stuff like that. So, you know, right. you're also in a unique position where you're you're one on one with a lot of people that are, you know, going through overdose or your you know substance abuse or something. So, you get to see firsthand how it or it and what it does to people. And 
you know, I, if I was in your shoes, I'd probably be exactly with you on this and, and doing and looking for these types of, you know, help for people. I mean, that just shows, that just shows how big your heart is and, and how really seriously you take your work and how involved you want to be in your community. I mean, it's, you're, I mean, what you're doing is just fantastic. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I, I hope everyone else views it that way. Well, if they don't, I I will come and beat them down and tell them, you know what (laughs) you, what Ray's doing is good. And you know, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to shake my finger at them. You know, uh, like shame on you. This is good, yeah. good, good stuff. This is good community service. And I mean, and not everyone gets to see that side like you do or like my friend does, who's the sheriff. Right. He, he, they, you just don't because you're, or even like your wife or my wife being in the hospital system and dealing with people that are, uh, you know, uh, you know, my wife used to deal a lot with when she worked at a different hospital. Uh, um, I can't remember what they called them, but the people that would that would constantly come in all the time. Oh, I got pains. You know, they're like you know pill pushers. They're they're trying drug, to drug seekers. Yeah, they're trying to come in all the time to the emergency room. Oh, you know, I got all these pains, and they're just trying to get they're trying to get prescriptions for medication, or they're trying to get in to get another fix. From yeah, that's hospital. that's 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 always that's still an issue, actually. Oh, that irritates the crap out of me. Like just to, just to hear all these stories. I mean, and. You know, I guess I didn't realize how closely you and I were tied into this. I mean, you're going one on one with these people, but like I said, my wife worked at a facility a while ago where it was the same thing. It was just like all she talked about were overdoses, people that were, you know, the drunks that were coming in, and just how people were coming in just to get another fix. And it's right. just, you know, to be in the healthcare system now, you understand why it's so effed up because you know, you got people like that, that just abuse the system and it, yeah, well, we don't even need, to, I don't even want to make this political or anything, but right. You know, right. It's yeah. I always, I always try to avoid politics, <laughs> man. Yeah. No, I, I do too, because you can, you can never win in that situation. So, right. okay. So we, we've discussed, you know, we have the basic gist of the, the, uh, charities that we're working for now let's let's kind of just take this conversation make it a little bit more upbeat because now i just i feel a little down and and you know i want to feel good again so so okay. we not we you you have decided to put a competition together your first one and you want the money that's raised at this event to go towards these charities which is very admirable and and so you you decided to put an event together and what is the venue at this event will be at? The venue is uh, called Rip Rap Roadhouse in Dayton. Right. It's a uh, old biker bar, actually, and we're we're hoping we're hoping the weather stays good because it gives us <clears throat> more area to be for their outside area. They got this huge stage that they hold events at, so that's that's the plan. I'm trying to work on getting a, a, a tent to hold the people within there just in case if the weather does get well, a little bit shaky. I, I think the weather should be fine because like it, part of the reason the government put that, you know, really nice base there is because you guys are closer to the equator and the weather should be always nice down in Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> what? What? Oh, what? what? Right back what? to those theories. Oh, no. so, so, so now right, right. Pat's controlling the, Controlling the weather. Oh, uh, I didn't oh, say it. Lord. I didn't say it. I, you did. You did. You're the conspiracy nut guy controlling weather stuff. I just said that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just going by latitude stuff, you know, here. <laughs> That's we're, we're, not, we're, we're not that close. Oh. Uh, I think Florida's closer yeah, well, to the equator. Yes, it could be, but you're much closer than Cleveland is. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> it's like freaking tropical in Dayton. Uh, in fact, because I was down in Columbus today and it was like. 20 degrees warmer, the sun was shining, their palm trees were like waving in the wind. I, sharks were jumping out of the ocean. It was pretty insane down there. Were, were you in Columbus, Ohio or Columbus, Georgia? I was in Columbus, Ohio, which is pretty wow. much all very close latitude to Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> well, I was 60 miles west. Yes, but <laughs> hey, man, let's, we're going with the curvature of the earth, unless you're a flat earth kind of guy. Oof. 
Uh, you, you probably <laughs> still travel by the, uh, what's that old saying? By the way, of, way of the crow or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know what you're talking about. You know, we don't crow around here. <laughs> well, the reason it's so cold out there is because you guys got all that lakefront stuff. Well, yes. And definitely. You know, we're, monsters and stuff. Yeah, it's the Lake Erie monsters bringing the lake effect snow. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And yeah. the UFOs flying off the lake over the, you know, to, yeah, we, you know <laughs> kind of, we're always taking this to the, to the wrong place, Ray. So, yeah. okay. So let's talk about the event specifically. Let's talk about your judges. Now, this is a, now for your first competition. And I was talking to one of the judges the other night, the uh, one of the judges and I actually went out to a concert the other night and we were talking about this event and how we were both very excited about it. And we were excited because number one, your judges, your judging panel is phenomenal. And, you know, the purpose of your event is great and everything just, I mean, it, this is going to be an awesome time. So anyone that's interested who lives in the Dayton area, Cleveland area, Columbus area, uh, Lexington area, all the surrounding places, you all should come up to this. Because it's going to be an awesome time. There's going to be really awesome people there. So let, let's let's go through the judges. Oh, you you went to another Kesha concert then? Jeez. Oh yes, that is where we went. <laughs> I got made fun of that today. Uh, once again, actually, I've gotten made fun of that every day. But I'm not. I'm not making fun of you. I was, I, I I know. I know who you're referring to. <laughs> Oh. Which I didn't know he was such a celebrity I saw on his birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. This person and I have gone to see Kesha on multiple times. I, that was one of those like reasons why him and I are such good friends. But, you know, also being interrelated. Once, you, once, once we – let's just let the cat out of the bag. Who is the guy we are talking about? You're going to have to pronounce his last name because I can never – Forget right. His name is first name is Eric. Last name Smith. But if Smith. And I know it isn't, but if you spell it out, it's Zachok. Zachok. (laughs) Zachok, yeah. Eric Zachok. Zachok. Yes, who is the president of the Beards of the Old Northwest, which is the club that I belong to. And uh yeah, Eric and I are very closely tied together. And uh yeah, so him and I went and saw Kasha the other night, but that's a whole nother story we don't need to talk about today. You know, because we've, we consistently get made fun of it. And I will say this, however, though, there were so many girls there. It was ridiculous that they had to be using the men's room. So the men were only allowed to go into the bathroom and use the urinals and the girls were allowed to go in and use, well, cause they couldn't really use the urinals anyways. So well, if they're intoxicated enough, I'm sure they'll figure out a way. Oh, well, it was a dry concert. So. There wasn't oh, any fear okay. of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's get off the whole Kesha thing right now. Let's get back to the competition because that's more exciting than Kesha, even though the concert was really good. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we got judge number one. We got Eric Zachok from Beards of the Old Northwest. Now, who else do we got? Following up from that, I went with Lance Wooten. Woo, Lance Wooten. Where's Lance from? I want to say London, Kentucky. Oh my gosh, that's like where Big Ben's at, or not that one? Lo- no, different London. Uh, I don't think there's. I don't even think there's a building even that big in London, Kentucky. I believe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got- I, I, I had to let that register. I've never been to London, Kentucky, but I, I don't. I don't think there's even a structure that big. We'll have to confirm that okay. with Lance. On yeah, the we'll 28th. have to, We'll we'll ask him about that. Right. Okay, so we got we got Lance, we got Eric, we also have and go, and we followed up right behind that with Ryan Shebley. Ryan Shebley. Now Ryan Shebley is who and where? Well, he took second place in world champion, uh, world beard championship, oh. and Amish Whaler. Oh, which the past few events I've had the opportunity to run into him every time, and he's a pleasure to talk to. Um, I believe he's out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think that's where he's from. All right, Fort Wayne. I'll put links. To, I'll put a link to everyone's uh, Facebook page. So if you are interested, you can. And, and this episode is going to go up a week before the competition. So. 
you'll have a week to look at all the links and everything so you can find out who everyone is. Except Lance doesn't have a Facebook. Oh, uh, well, jeez. <laughs> Man. He's got an Instagram. Okay. Well, I'll hook it up to his Instagram. I'll find whatever social media each of these people use, and you can easily find them. Okay. <laughs> so we have Lance. We have Eric. We have Ryan. And who else do we have? I wanted to throw a wrench in the wheels, and I threw Kristen Wags in there, which I find out she judges at every competition I've been to. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kristen Wags. We love Kristen. She is one of the premier whiskerinas out there. In my opinion, she is one of the premier whiskerinas out there from the Steel City Beard and Mustache. Yes. Team. I uh, she is she is an angel. She is a doll. We love her very much. So I'll be excited yeah, was, to see her. Okay, and we have our last judge being uh, Kristen McNaughton. Okay. Who is she? She is from uh, Mercer County. Facial Hair Club. Oh, okay. Very good. I wanted to get another uh, Ohio judge, and I wanted – because I I've, I was actually with Mercer County last night at their event. Oh. And um, – because as you can see, I'm trying to, you know – I give up. Go. Get the cl- I'm trying – I'm working on getting all the clubs involved – with what I'm wanting to do. Oh yeah. Well, absolutely. So, I mean, that's the only way you're going to accomplish anything. I mean, you, you, as, as someone who does an event, you want to reach out to as many clubs as you can to get it, you know, cause their reach is like, it's like a spider web. It's like, you know, you're at that center and you want to send out those feelers to all the different clubs, at least in your state or your area. And then, you know, once they're on board, then they send it out to their, you know, members or people that are interested too. So that's just, it only helps your event get bigger and better every year. Yeah, that's so. That's that's who I went with 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 through them. Um, so, because I, I contacted their their president Ethan, and he's like, I got the perfect person for you. And then I, then I, I ran into her down in Cincinnati, and she's like, I've never judged before. And I was like, I didn't yeah. know you had to be a judge to judge. I, I'm just no. glad to have you there. No, I mean, anyone that's involved in the scene, you know, they know what they know. They like what they like. And if they're, if they're involved in a club, they, they know, I mean, they, they just know. I mean, it's, and, and the fact that you've picked a panel of judges that are all involved in the scene is very good because it, it, there's nothing worse than going to an event where you have a local celebrity that doesn't know anything about beards or mustaches. And they're just like, he, he, ho, ho, and all that elf stuff, right? you know. It, but to have, I mean, you have a very esteemed group of people that are going to be judging. Yeah. Now, who is the MC for this? Because he looks like a jerk. Uh, man, it, this was this was a really tough decision because I heard this guy was a really pr- big prick. Yeah. But you know, the more I've talked to him, I've seen the name around. Know, uh, I think his name was uh, Scott. Bayo. Oh, did he love Chachi? Uh, Joni. I believe he loved Joni. Oh, yeah. But no, I'm actually talking to the MC of this event right now. Oh, Jesus. Is he on the other line or do you have me on hold? No, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking about you. Oh, no way. Thank you for asking me. Jeez, I'm so glad you waited till the last second to ask me. Yeah, this. I, see how that works. I, I just throw people right, 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 wow. right, out, right under that bus, man. Okay, I accept your challenge. I will be there. I will try to entertain as much as I can and and fill the crowd with a lot of very good factual facts because that's the way I roll. Yeah, that's awesome. No, but I'm very flattered that you asked. I, I mean. I, I got the message, like, literally, I got off my plane when I was uh, coming back from Worlds, and you had messaged me about it, and I was like, wow, I'm like, this is great, you know? So I immediately responded back, I'm like, heck yeah, man, I'm all about this, and you know, the more I looked into the event and saw, you know, number one, th- what it was for, I was sold on that, because like I said, everyone has a backstory with dealing with someone who's had drug abuse or mental issues or whatever, but... This one really kind of hit really close to home with me because I've I've lost a couple friends to heroin overdoses. Um, I've lost friends to you know pill 
popping and stuff like that. So I, I've, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it sucks. And, and I mean, though some of the people are still alive, I've lost my friendships with them and it, it still hurts because I was really yeah, good I mean, friends with them. Yeah. Cause that, that, that stuff just, you know, if that destroys families and everything and the more, more, more I looked into it, it's, it's not just, you know, it's not, it's not your average, people anymore either that people think it's not, it's not the rich it's not the poor it doesn't matter if you're if you're black or white or yeah. anything like that this this this, yeah. is, this this is affecting everything and you know especially you know even the law enforcement officers they're, they're but with with uh fent- fentanyl and the car fentanyl yeah. with, with that being in there they're 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 getting accidentally ex- exposed to it from uh dealing with subjects do, doing their their searches and stuff like that and just even skin contact to these um uh chemicals or putting them into overdose and Jeez. i mean it's, it's 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 insane yeah i mean yeah so. it, it happens to everyone i mean it, it like you said black white anyone i mean rich poor the le- the least like uh yeah i mean and that's with me it's like the people that you would never think of in a million years and it's like are you shitting me like this person overdosed and you would have never thought in a million years they were doing anything right and that's the sucky part because the they they leave a good family behind they you know and it's it's tough, man. You know, but once again, we don't want to be a downer anymore. So let's get back into the competition. Yeah, let's okay. get back to okay. it. So I'm going to go down your list of categories that 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 we have here. We have kids, okay. kids creative, which is always a crowd favorite. Tell us a little bit about that one. Um, being my first event, I you know I, I didn't even know there was a kids creative until someone brought it up what? to me. What? Yeah. Well, Jeez. you know, I'm I'm still a noob to the comps. You know, wow. I just my first comp was Beards Behind Bars uh, up the up there at the uh, Ohio State Mansfield. Reformatory. Yep, up in Mansfield, and uh, so that was that was all adults. So you know, I, th- I thought this was I thought this was how everything went, and I thought this was just how these comps went. Mm-hmm. And, uh, some some of the people that were interested in the event, they're like. So is this a kid friendly event? I'm like, well, before I could even answer him, they called the venue. The venue goes, yeah, they can, we could, you know, it's kid friendly and all that. And so it progressed and someone goes, well, what about a kid's, kid's category? And I go, huh? And what's funny is, you know, I follow uh, Ryan Sheedley on Facebook. Yeah. Um, he's, he, he's a great guy to, you know, he's very uplifting if you, if you follow any of his posts on Facebook. Um, real down to earth, real family oriented guy. And, um, I was seeing pictures of, uh, his son, uh, competing and stuff and all well, actually videos too. And I'm like, Oh, so there is a category. Uh, okay. And I, I did a post and, you know, I got I got a few reactions from. Him. I said, "Well, let's just go with it. We get we get a couple to show yeah. up. We'll, we'll go with it." And um, so I've I've already gotten to work for next year. I don't know if anyone else is doing this, but I think we're gonna um to get more of the public involved with this next year because I just got the idea like last week. I actually, have like stuff and materials there for the kids to actually make their beard. Oh, yeah, that there. Is- yeah, there's uh, there's a couple other events that have happened uh, that I, that I'm aware of around the country that will they'll um, set up like a craft day, like maybe the day or two before, and they'll have the okay. kids come out and they will work on them, you know. So then they can take them home and work on them a little bit more for like the next couple days, and then they'll they'll, they'll have them come in and stuff and do the competition and stuff. So they have a little bit more time to, instead of like, I mean, yeah, if they show up early and you do that category first, you know, they're not like rushed to get something put together like super quick. Right. So that's, that's how that category came about. Okay. And then we have, <laughs> we have the women's creative, which is a whiskerina category, which is now becoming like one of the, 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 this is the hot category going around right now because the whiskerina uh whiskerinas are starting to really grow and thrive in the country right now so 
Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, I, you know, I, the, when I first saw that up there in Mansfield, I was just like, holy cow, this is awesome. Yeah, it's my favorite category. Yeah. I love it. It's it just yeah. because it's like, just to see how creative the girls can be. And I mean, for going to Worlds and being involved in this scene for five, six years and seeing all the different ones that have never been reproduced by other people. I mean, there's such originality in all of these. It's just, it's stunning to see how well these girls can come up with new ideas all the time. And, yeah. And I think yeah. it's becoming like diff- more difficult because I've talked to a couple of girls and they're like, you know, yeah, it's getting harder now because a lot of the stuff has been done and it's like trying to like figure out something new, new, new to do or a, completely different take on something that's been done so it doesn't even seem like it's been something that's been done before they want crazy ideas they can always call me i'm <laughs> always full of just insane i was like man i kind of want I, I they should have like a men's category for this well they do i mean it, it actually at worlds they did have a guy that did go for creative and really yeah he well he didn't I don't know what place he ended up getting, but it, everyone was kind of like, uh, but the way it was posed by the Austin facial hair club, according to Brian Nelson was, it was posed as a, a creative. So anyone who wanted to do it could be involved. So right. it wasn't just strictly for women. It was, uh, it was like a creative beard. So if a man wanted to do it or like his daughters were involved in it too. So if the kids wanted to do that too, they could, it was an all encompassing category. So it wasn't just oh, strictly okay. strictly for women. And, but then also we had a woman that was in a men's category because we did have a woman there that had a natural beard. A full no, natural I, beard. I did, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, Rose. I, yeah, Rose. Yeah. yeah. Once again, I can't speak highly enough about her. She's just an amazing woman. Yeah, I, 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 I I saw that Rose. I'm trying to remember the last name, but Guile I, I, I Rose Guile Guile. Okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah. yeah, I was I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. So okay, so the next category we have now we're getting into the staple categories like natural mustache, styled mustache, and then we get to the 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 partial categories where you you've separated them all into chops, whaler, and partial slash goatee. Now that's really cool as being a partial guy. I'm always getting stuck in into a, a category where, like I say, you, you're getting thrown into a partial category and you get stuck against like chop guys and whaler guys. So you have three different types of categories that are all in one. Right. And I like the fact that you guys had separated them all up, which is really cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, like I said, I, I kind of, you know, I can't make everyone happy. You can't. But and- I reached out and I, I, I went and talked to people and go, how do we want to set this up? Yeah. And they said, separate those categories, please. Yes. And and they, they explained to me why. And that's and so I said, okay, this is the way it's going to be then. And we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Cool. Okay. So then we go into, you know, the partial goatee freestyle, which partial freestyle uh, then this is a really cool category, which not a lot of competitions have, and I'm glad you have this, the best gray beard, which is, that's, that's a nice one to have. Cause it kind of, that one is another one that separates and it's, and it's a very unique category. So that's really cool. Um, then we have full by bio- a full beard styled mustache. Then we have full beard, zero to six inch full beard, six to 12 inch full beard, 12 and over and full beard freestyle. So that I mean, those are the list of your categories. So if you fit into any of that criteria, please come on out. You can go check out the Facebook page, uh, the Sinful Beard. All you gotta do is just do a search for Sinful Beard Oil, and you can get hooked up to the page. But once again, I will put a link up to the uh, page for the event, and you can you can get more details there. And which we're pretty much giving all of you the details right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but before we go any further, I've got to give credit to the person for the gray beard category. It was uh, Mark Britton. Mm-hmm. Who's Mark? That was his. Um, I actually got to meet him in Pittsburgh. Um, I believe he's in recovery. That's why he's 
really wanting to be a part of this event. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he reached, he reached out to me through the Facebook page when I was actually set up the categories and he goes, Hey, you should do the best gray. And, you know, I was going to do a bunch of different, like crazy categories and whatever, but I, I kind of wanted to just tie it in like natural and throw in a couple different ones. But he reached out and told me that. And, uh, um, so I got, I, I got to give Mark Burton, uh, uh credit for that well, for, that is, for coming up with that idea. No, that's a very good idea because I mean that I mean I there's been uh this actually might be the first time that I personally have seen best gray cuz usually it's the one I've seen is the best red beard because that's best. another I mean cuz most guys will have like a real bright red beard or like a dull red beard so they'll have a red beard category. So this is the first time I've seen an actual gray beard one. So that's, that's a pretty unique it's, and it's always nice to like, I've all the different uh, uh, clubs or whoever's organized events in the past. You know, I always ask them, well, what unique category do you guys have to your, your towards your event? And you know, this definitely is a unique one to you. So it's always good to have, like if you're a club or an organizer to have one unique category, at least that, separates you from all different contests out there. Yeah. Okay. Now let's get into, <laughs> we got some sponsors here. We'll, 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 we'll run through this real quick because there's one last thing that I want to talk to you about because one of these sponsors uh, definitely applies to what I want to talk to you about here shortly. <laughs> so okay. we, we have, we have, well, I, and I'll say this one last just so then that can lead into a different, conversation here okay okay we have snow mo man which is what uh he does like landscaping he does like uh basically mows your grass and does snow removal in the winter so he's got you covered oh it's all in uh, the name it is all yeah it's all on on the name so he must be um, a man he's just one because it's not men so he's a one-man outfit I don't believe so. I believe he's got some other employees working with him. Well, you need to tell him he needs to change the name of his company to Snowmo Men. Then well, I'm I'm not telling someone who donated generously to the cause. Okay, what, that... what to do with his business? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't either. But you know, we're, we're not going to split hairs here when it comes to that. Yeah, I mean, he he, he was one of the first ones to come out and sp- sponsor this event. Very cool. Now let's talk about Julia's nightclub. This sounds yeah. Fun. That's yeah, it sounds it sounds fun. It's um, it's actually outside of Dayton. I think closer to the Miamisburg area. It's um, uh, you know they do this the uh kind of the older dance music, old style dance club. You know what I mean? Oh, all right. Uh, so like the fifties, they do probably the, like the no, twist. Fifties. Yeah, you go in there. They're they're doing the twist and the mashed potato and the monster <laughs> mash and all that other. The stuff. The walkers are breaking and falling to the floor. Yeah, there you go. Not that old. <laughs> we're we're going to go much newer than that. I, I, I'd say like, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's upbeat, but it's tailored pride to the crowd of like people your age, you know, like 50 and 60 year olds. <laughs> Ooh, that one stung, bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, that was great. No, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's a really nice, it's a really nice uh, nightclub. It's, um. You know, it's probably for people like in their mid thirties and up to go to and have a good time. Well, it sounds and, like that definitely so, does sound like the type of place yeah. I would like to go to. Yeah. Okay, now drum roll please. Brrr. Brrr. What is uh, I wish I, I wish you knew how that I'd have pulled up my soundboard. Oh I know. Well I have one too, but <laughs> I'm a, or I'm a drummer. I could have just pulled my drum out and just started doing drum rolls for you. But okay, so our last sponsor is and go tell us, Ray. Hometown Vapes in Eaton, Ohio. Oh yes, Hometown yeah. Vapes. Now let uh, how did how did now how did you get involved with them to be a sponsor? <laughs> well, I've been a customer there for quite a while. Sixty two years. 62 years, exactly. Jeez. Today, 62 years. You were the inventor of vaping, I hear. No, I'm not the inventor of vaping. Okay. Um, but the, fun, the, the the other side to it is I've been a customer there, but he's also one of the retailers for uh, Simple 
He Ooh. sells all my products there as well. Very cool. So, okay, and, so um, if by some chance you would like to purchase oils other than online and you happen to be in the Dayton area, you can go to... This is actually the Preble County area. Oh, all right. Well, you know, this is, yeah, it's Eat, Eaton, Ohio. It's down it's, uh, closer to the equator than I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So they, they, they carry your oils and stuff. So if you are interested, you can go there. If not, we can go to what's your website? Sinful with a Y by nature.com. All right. Now, getting back to the whole vape thing, this is where you spilled the beans on this one as we were kind of bullshitting before we got into yeah, this. And yeah, yeah. Someone accidentally, I don't know if you accidentally said this, but he said he used to be into competitive vaping. Now, yes. Uh, okay, do you do, please do tell because I know nothing about this. And as I stated to you, I said uh, when when you now before we started the interview, you took a big hit off your vape, and I was like, oh my god, what is that? That horrific yeah. sound. And then I was like, you know, we were just discussing when we were down in Worlds. I said, what is it about the bearding community? Everyone vapes. Everyone vapes. No one really smokes anymore. Everyone vapes. And I was with the, well, I was down in Columbus today with uh, another, I won't mention the the name of the company, but uh, all the guys that were there were all vaping too. And I was like, and we went outside and we were at a, a, a hair show, like a convention and we go outside and everyone's out there vaping. And I'm like, this is just weird because I'm like, I was a smoker. I was that guy that went outside and smoked and whatever. But now that I go to, you know, I'm done and over with that. And I go to competitions, everyone is vaping, but this is like the only community that I see this in. And it just boggles my mind. And then I come and talk to you, the beard growing guy. And then you tell me you were into competitive, competitive vaping. And I was just like, what the F I'm like, so tell me, like, what is a vaping competition like? What, what I, I just don't <laughs> – please, en- <laughs> please enlighten me. Oh, man, there's actually there, – there's actually like national championships and all that. I never I never went to that or I never went to – I never traveled the country. I did like all the local shops in the Ohio, Ohio area, like up in Columbus and maybe Cincinnati, Franklin, and all the ones in Dayton, Ohio. Um, but like, yeah, it's like who could blow the biggest cloud and you'd be sitting there belt, belt setting up your rig and all this, and make sure the wick, wick's proper and all this, and just see how big and how far out and how condensed that clap, that vapor cloud could be. And I've seen, I've seen like it, 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 it it's crazy because some of the big, the, the people that had the bigger followings and clicks like that and. You, you go to these places, there'd be like a ton of people at these places, man. And, um, I, I mean, there's even like freestyle tricks and stuff like that. And, and I, I, I hate to laugh at this because I've seen memes online about like competitive vaping. And I honestly thought it was a joke. I did not think that it was an actual thing. Right. Right. It's, it, it's a thing. There's, and, and, and you know what? I think it'd still be strong to this day if that community would have been focused like how our bearding community is. And like vaping, what, what a, vaping for the the uh, local dog dog uh, shelter. Just any type of charity. <laughs> just just what whatever charity. I, I think you know. I think stuff like that when local people and organizations and clubs, you put it more to a charity type driven thing, I think that will outlast anything than just, you know, maybe they wouldn't have been, you know, made fun of for competitive vaping, but you know, one one, one of the guys here from Dayton, uh, Anthony, uh, not Trey, I'm trying to remember his last name. He was actually Tosh point. He was like on his video was like put on Tosh point. Oh, and like one of his, the trick videos i mean this dude this dude like he was like sponsored and they paid for him to like go all over the country to do his tricks and stuff like that and, and i don't even, i don't even think he vapes anymore <laughs> does, he got, does he have the popcorn lung no no that's yeah yeah 
I think that's kind of like a myth, and that's with like certain ingredients with people that made flavors and stuff. And that, I think that was like with stuff that had diacetyl in it. Yeah. I don't so know. A lot, I, lot of, a lot of the vape juice companies avoid using diacetyl. So, yeah, that's and their I flavors. Mean, that's that's all, the only thing I heard was is like how like vaping was bad for you because of the result of popcorn lung and. Uh, th- yeah, I mean, that's a few years of diacetyl-based yeah. flavoring. I mean, that that was the only bad thing that I've heard of or seen result from that. And, um, <coughs> the that right that there, would, that uh, right there, the you coughing. <laughs> that, that's because I had like a little bit of a spittle go go in the back of my throat. That's not from vaping. Okay, okay. I, I've been I've been I've been cigarette free for. Uh, three years from not doing it, and I, I breathe a lot better. I smoke, I smoke two packs a day, man. You know that's why I did it, and but then I ended up getting into the competitive side and all that. But you know, but I, I don't know. I could, I could breathe better and all that. And I'm not getting up and hacking my lungs out every day. I don't have popcorn lungs, so. <laughs> well, like I said, I know nothing about it, so it's always nice to, you know, if there's something yeah. that you're not educated into, like, how how pleased was I to, like, meet someone tonight, um, you know, doing this interview that it was doing something that I didn't even know existed, yeah. and, you know, it, to, to have you right here, like, to be like, oh, yeah, I could ask you questions, and, you know, I just want you let you know that these questions I'm going to ask you, I'm not making fun of you. I just don't understand it. I don't know it, you know? And then, well, 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 well not, not only like it, there, there's like online competitions and there, there's clicks and groups and closed groups that were behind the scenes, like how we have in the beard community as well, like secret Facebook pages and whatever. And oh you call each other out and blow clouds and, you know, the ban- and his banner and everything else. And it was, it was like another type of brotherhood within that community, too. Wow. I would so. have never known that. Like I said, I, everything that I had seen online about competitive vaping, I always thought was a joke. I I mean, I, but I guess, I mean, it's just like the bearding thing. It's like anyone who has a similar interest and, in, you know, even driving by like the local uh, vape shops around you always see like groups of guys just hanging out in there you know i guess i never really yeah. thought that you know it, it it could blossom into its own community and yeah well i got you hey man we learned we learned a lot of really new interesting things tonight we learned yeah. about you, you, <laughs> geez wow you, you, you'd be amazed when you know people actually sit down and talk about things with what you can learn no, I know definitely. I mean, I what I if we would have discussed earlier, hey, let's Ray, let's talk tonight about let's talk about the competition and if I would have known that it was going to turn into talking about competitive vaping, I would have been like, "No way, Jose." But <laughs> but I mean, hey, it definitely took a turn for the better because now we have, I mean, and hence why I say that I noticed that a lot of the guys vape. So maybe now we'll somehow be able to tie the vaping community with the bearding community and then this is where it all started maybe you're going to be the guy that's going to change the world by doing that <laughs> <laughs> i you know i i, I focus on I'm, I'm, all my focus is on with the bearding right now i mean but but <laughs> come on man i mean there's got to be a way we can we can crossbreed these, then we can like do a freestyle beard that like shoots vape out of it or something. I, yeah, you, know. you could, you could, man. I mean, I'm sure, but you know, with 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 anything else, because the FDA is involved, and now they're calling it a tobacco product, and there's absolutely no tobacco in it. Um, you know, you, you like like you said, you went to that event today, and where are the vapors going? They're going outside to vape now. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes it a little bit harder to do. Well, I did, but yeah, but that was the thing is I saw people inside vaping, but then it was like other people were going outside to vape. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the guys I was, the guys that I was with were all going outside to do it outside. There are other people I saw you doing it inside, but yeah. Hey, I, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of places they, they, you know, frown upon no, no it. No smoking, no vaping. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's turning into, 
you know, personal opinion and stuff like that with that now and, and a, a taboo per se or a stigmata like anything else. Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely. So all right, Ray. Well, let's wind it up but, on yeah. that. But uh, we can, like you said, let's let's real do a really quick recap. Um, the competition. Tell us the date of the competition, where it's at. It's uh, October twenty eighth. Uh, the doors are at three p.m. and they'll be able, people will be able to register from three to five, and we're looking to get the re- competition starting at five thirty. All right. Uh, it's at Rip Rap Road House. It's in Dayton on Rip Rap Road. Rip Rap. And once again, I will have links to all this stuff in the show notes. So if you want any yeah. more information, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, you'll be able to find it. Just listen. Yeah. Tickets are uh, $15. I've been offering pre sale tickets for $12. Where do they go to get pre-sale tickets at? They can actually order them on my website, uh, sinfulbynature.com. That's sinful with a Y. And it's under the Beards Against Drugs link there on my page. And you can get tickets below. Um, So we're we're offering them there and we'll mail you the tickets. Also, I forgot about this. Uh Uh-oh. Well, you didn't because now we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Since this was like our first year, we're trying to figure out other ways to raise money. I started raffling off. Yes, I, I am. Your body I parts. Am a, no, body oh. parts. Your body parts. No, oh. it's not. We're not raffling off my body parts. I don't know. Like maybe need, somebody might want your pinky finger for something. I need my pinky finger. Oh. Well, then you can bid on it then. Well, that's, that that Going, way I can hit that one weird key on the top of the keyboard when oh, I'm typing okay. or something. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're, we're, we're raffling off a, um, a shotgun that one of our uh, one of my other my one of my other retailers owns is actually a uh, bait bait shop and archery shop, and they we were able to get a, a shotgun to raffle off because that's big in the area hunting and fishing and all that, and we're we're, we're selling raffle tickets for that as well oh, to help cool. raise more money. Got to be an Ohio resident. Got to be able to pass a background check. Got to do it legally. Yeah. So, but we're doing that, and the chances on that are uh, um, five a ticket or five for twenty. And I've I've been people reach out to me, and I've been filling out their tickets and mailing them to them as well. So, right. but we'll, we'll we'll be selling those there as well. So that's very cool. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of as many ways as I possibly can to raise money for these these uh, organizations. I mean, I know everyone's been running around crazy since Worlds and Fall's been a back to back to back. Uh, yeah, well, events, yeah. So. It, I mean, it definitely has. It's like literally like every weekend. There's been a different. Oh, well, and and the thing for us is where we live. There's been like one every weekend that's been within like a two and a half hour radius. Right. And then on top of that, there's been even more competitions like on the West coast or, you know, in the middle of the country, like we have uh, the St. Louis bam coming up and I think that's next weekend. So that's the 21st. Yes. And then immediately following that is yours. And then then after mine is Detroit. Yeah. Which so, I want to get to, but I, I've got to slow down and focus on my family for a little bit. Yeah, you do. You've been going hard, so, man. You've been going hard. It's time, you know, um, you have a new baby. Let's let's calm down, dude. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But but right after this event, I'm going to be reaching out to the clubs. We're going to find a neutral area, a neutral time to do this. Canada. And get it set. Oh, Oh, it ain't going to be Canada. I'm talking about like a neutral month. Oh, well, that oh, way we're going to do that and pre-plan around that. Canada. Well, you know, they're neutral when it comes to stuff. I don't have a passport, so we can't go up there. Okay. Well, you know, you know I'm sorry. I'm just throwing. I mean, we, 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 can, we can move the event somewhere. That's that's not a problem. Canada. We're not going to Canada, oh, Scott. Sorry. I'm sorry. They have good beer up there, though. How We've about, got good beer down here. How about Canada. We go, how about we look into Canada? I mean, the only thing I could think out of there is like Labatt's Blue, and I think it's probably brewed here. No, actually, all the Budweiser is brewed different up there. If you have a Budweiser up in Canada, it's totally different than what it is down here. It's amazing. 
Well, let's just uh, you, uh, we're going to talk about beer. We can go to Germany. Oh no, that shit's just too heavy. I'm a light beer kind of guy. I'm a lightweight. I don't, you know, I don't like fancy stuff. I, you know, you're a beer drinker. You're drinking gin and tonics in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, yeah, I was. Too. And I and I had to fix your orders. I know, man. You saved the day once again. <laughs> All right, Ray. Well, thank you for saving the day. Additionally, I, you, I mean, you're, you're all, you know, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in, in a couple of weeks. And, uh, like I said, if anyone has any questions, you know, they, they can check out the blog post for this or the show notes. Like if you by some chance are subscribed to this on iTunes or any of the other ones, just click on, on your, uh, podcatcher show notes and there'll be a list and you should be able to click on a link. Oh, click oh, on a awesome. link. If Aaron Johnson's listen, Uh-oh. John, Johnson, yes, Johnson. If he's listening, if he wants to be back on your show, he needs to come to Ohio on that day. That, that should be your condition. Uh oh, because I, I'm a fanboy of him. <laughs> I will let him know as soon as I get off with you. I'll text him and yeah. tell him that because <laughs> I think he was actually considering coming up, but. I, I think that he wasn't going to come because he knew I wasn't competing and he knew he couldn't beat me down again. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's just the way he rolls, man. Yeah, I tried to get another epic lined up, too. Another epic lineup. Hey, you don't want to blow your load your first year, man. No, because, well, uh, it, this was another fanboy choice, um, but the person I wanted to put against this other person decided to grow up there. Oh. So you know what I'm talking about. I could be. I'm thinking of someone. Would they be? So, so they're, they're known for their English mustache. Oh, yes. And someone from your club that's up and coming. Yes. I know he's going to be there. Then that this other said person with the English mustache is going to be there, but he now has a beard, and I was hoping to see those two go head to head. Yes, yes. Was this so, a person that I happened to be with today? Yes, it was. All right, that's what I because I, I reached out to Lance Wooten, and because I don't know how to get get a hold of that said person, mm-hmm. which he's probably like twenty minutes away from me. But he I, said, Lance, "I think Lance has got him going." Yeah, I, I I was asking him about it today. I said, "Hey, you're gonna be at this thing?" He's like, "He's like, I don't know yet." He's like, "the the venue is like literally like a couple miles from my house." Yeah, I'm like, "Come on, dude!" But he, the job he works, he works nights. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I if he can, he will be there, and he will definitely be there with bells on. Yeah, that'd but be that that'd would be I great. would I would love to see that head to head though. I know what you're talking about. So I guess mm-hmm. I guess you people are probably going to have to just come to the event to see this epic battle hopefully unfold. Yes. Because that's hopefully. what it seems like a lot of competitions are turning into now. It's like you have a whole bunch of new people coming in but then you have these the old the old school guys coming in and there's like these big battles going on now with like which is really cool. I mean for us guys that have been doing it for a while but like I Aaron and I talked about it's like you know, it's cool to do competitions and stuff. And, and like, it was really cool for me to go against him and he's a newer guy in the scene. And I've, you know, I've been doing it for four or five, six years and it's really cool to get beat by a guy that's only been doing it for a few years. And it's cool to have like all these new guys that are just showing up just to kind of see and they're entering and, you know, they might not be finishing like real high and stuff. And, and for me, that's a lot of the reason why I kind of like, backed out of competing a few years ago because it's like, I, you know, I, I know there needs to be a whole bunch of new guys that get involved that can get, you know, up to the status that we've gotten over the past years of, you know, cause it, it's, it's just not fun if the same guys are winning all the time. Right. So you have to always take that in consideration when you're a competitor. So, I mean, at least I do. I mean, I'm very, very, uh, I try to pay attention to, you know, competitions and how many guys are in a category. I mean, if there's like a couple guys in a category, I'm like, I'd, I'd rather not compete just to give them a chance to, you know, especially if I know, you know, cause everyone looks on Facebook to see what everyone's bringing. So yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, the, it's the nature well, that's, of the that's beast. actually, uh, not very dickish of you. That's kind of considerate. Well, I mean, 
But that's the thing. That's the only way that you're going to get this scene to grow. I, I mean, know. you got it. You you have to. The guys that are winning all the time, and you know, and and if it's always in a close category, you gotta you gotta step back. I mean, and and, and what I explained to Aaron too is like being in the beards of the old Northwest. One of our rules in our club is is if you're a board member you are not allowed to compete at any of your own events so if you wow. come, if you come to one of our events and you know like you know eric zachok being the president he can't compete so he's won plenty of freestyle you know full beard things yeah. so you know it's it's one guy that you just don't have to worry about or even me winning impartial like you know beating a lot of guys out over the years I'm another guy you don't have to worry about, you know, or Rocky, you know, it's it just, you know, we try to make it fair. We try to make it inviting and we want new people. We, it, the scene is not going to get bigger. It's not going to get better if you can't recruit new people and you can't get people addicted by, you know, not winning. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, you know, it, it is it is all for charity, but you, you got to give a little wiggle room somewhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is all for charity, and, and the people the people like coming for that. But there's also the competition side where the people are getting the endorphins from, like, oh my god, I got first place or second place, and it's like there's plenty of guys that I know that I've gotten that I've introduced into the scene, and you know they've won once, and it's like bam it's like they're hooked and they're like going to like you know five six seven events a year yeah oh well, you gotta think of all the people that aren't uh club affiliated to showing up to these events yeah. and you know i talked to one up there in mansfield he's like yeah this is my fifth or sixth and he, he wasn't with any club or anything like that and it's just like he's like yeah you know you don't need to be I mean, for goodness sakes, you're you're one of the first guys that I've known that's just been an individual that's thrown an event. I mean, you're not a club. Yeah, I just, I just, so, you know, I I saw what 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 what, what bearding's about. You know, I start I started a company, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'm gonna make the beard oil that's gonna change the beard oil industry and whatnot. And you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reach and climb for it. But I, you know, I come up to Mansfield and. I started talking to people and stuff like that, and I go, "Man, this is this is amazing what they're doing." So you know, that's I instantly turned around and started working on what I wanted to work on, and then I reached out to Eric, and he he started giving me advice and getting me in touch with people and telling me what clubs what and who to get a hold of, and you know, he's very very helpful with this. Well, I mean, that's so. that's the nature of. Uh, any, I mean, anyone that you reach out to, hopefully in this scene, is going to be that guy. Where you know, if you reach out to Chad from the RVA, the RVA Beard League, I mean, he'd be that same guy where he would help you out. Or if you reached out to, I mean, Aaron, Aaron Johnston, you know, the Holy City Beard and Mustache Coalition. Yeah. I mean, same thing. He would take the time out of his day to help you. You know, and and that's those are the type of people that you like having in the leadership roles of your of your club is they'll take the time to help anyone out that that's looking because the only way the scene's going to get bigger and for us to help more charities is to get more people involved. Right. Right. And that's why, you know, I'm hoping <coughs> there, there's that popcorn. On, on there it again. is. There it is. Um, but I, you know, I'm hoping we can get more general view on bo both sides, you know, one for the, charity and plus for the bearding that way because you know i taught i taught because dayton there's really not that scene here compared to like cleveland or pittsburgh or cincinnati you know may, maybe this will open someone's else because yeah. i talk to people and it's like competition beard cap you you doing what i go yeah i said it's all for charity and all this 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 is why i'm doing this and you know, it, I got I got to school them to get you know get get them uh, on a better pers perspective to see why we're doing this. So, you know, hopefully we can open eyes on bo both sides of the tracks on the, for this doing this here in Dayton. So, oh, definitely, we can open the eyes of the the uh, the, the the freeze dried aliens at. At that yeah, maybe, maybe maybe we get someone. Maybe we get a bearded alien to show up to the event. Yeah, yeah. 
That, that, that would be, be great. Uh, that would be great. I'd be t- oh, that, that's how you hit people. It means come in a costume. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is right. <laughs> Didn't you not say that because it's close to Halloween, you want people to come in costume? Yes. I'd love to see everyone come out in costume. Um, I'm going to, regardless of how many kids we're going to come, I believe uh, Jennifer Anderson, uh, they're bringing candy for the kids. All right, cool. I believe that's what she told me. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get some too. Just that, that way we have, if they, they want, you know, yeah. trick or treat candy, we'll have it there for the kids. Very cool. So, but yeah, everyone come in costume. Let's have fun. Let's, let's just have fun. You know, yeah. that's, well, that's what is, that, that raise money for two great causes. Yep. Absolutely. Ray. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, I mean, taking the, I mean, literally you've spent an hour and a half with me tonight and I absolutely am very grateful that you took that time out of your day to talk to me about all of this. I know it's very important to you and it's very important to me to, to help spread your message too. So I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk with me tonight. Well, I appreciate you reaching out and doing this for me. I yeah. mean, that's, that's one thing. If people don't show up, you know, or they can't, they can't donate or whatever, even just talking about this event is raising awareness one way or another. No, oh, absolutely. So I, I appreciate that. Well, absolutely. And, and like I said, everyone, everyone is affected by this, you know, and, or they will be affected by it. That's the unfortunate side to it. So. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. So oh, once again, everything, I'll put a bunch of list in the show notes and then just keep your eyes peeled. And, uh, I thank you once again, Ray, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you, Scott. All right. Thank you. And Raymond, thank you so much for taking your time and explaining the competition, Sinful Beard Oil, and all the awesome things that you're doing. And, I, you know, I, hey, man, I learned so much about competitive vaping tonight. I My mind is blown. So, Ray, thank you so much for taking your time. And don't forget the competition is in Dayton on the 28th of October. So if by some chance you're in the area, please come on out. We got great judges and an awesome MC right here. I mean, not that you like, hear me talk enough on the podcast, but you could have an event where you hear me talk all night. Holy shit, your head should explode. Yeah, mine's going to. Either that or I'm going to lose my voice. But uh, ah, it, it, yeah, it, it's awesome. I, I thank him for asking me to do that. I thank him for being a, a great dude. A giving guy, a guy that just wants to make you happy. That's Ray. Ray wants to do everything he can to change the world, and I so admire that. He is a good dude, big heart. So come on, come on out, support the event. And uh, if you can't, well, you know, hey, you know, go out and go out to any local beard competition and support whatever charity they're they're working for. So it's the least you can do. So. But let's uh, wrap this up. And, you know, once again, thebeardcaster.com. Go to there. Go to there. How about go there? And, you know, check out all the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Hey, if you're feeling extra giving, Patreon, you can go there. Donate a dollar a month. Whatever you want. Whatever you feel I'm worth to you. I hate begging, but I have that option there. So if by some chance you are a a fan of the show and you really love what I'm doing and you want to help me excel and grow and get to different places and you just feel giving by all means I greatly appreciate it so Patreon just the links there at thebeardcaster.com if you have any questions, comments, concerns or want to say uh, I don't know give me a good knock knock joke you can email me at scott at thebeardcaster.com and that's about all I got for you. So by some chance, oh, here's my last, my last thing, as I, I like to say. And I don't even think I did this on my last episode, but make sure you tell a friend about this podcast. Tell somebody, tell two people. If you're, if you got a beard and you're interested in this, or if you like the show, make sure you tell a couple people. It helps the show grow. It helps me get to more people. And that's what I want to do. I'm just trying to make a difference in the community. I'm trying to help the small guys out, the small clubs out, the big clubs out, 
get their message out and to help their charities out. So if, you know, help, help me, help me help you, as they say. So share it with a couple friends, tell tell your 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 family. I mean, not, your family might not be the target demographic I'm looking for, but if you're in a beard club, hey, let everyone else in the club know. And, you know, let's get some more people subscribed, listening to the podcast, and let's help this whole scene grow together because that's my mission is to help the scene grow and get more people educated about what the bearding scene is all about and how we are nothing but giving, caring guys that are trying to promote charity and good lifestyle and brotherhood. So thank you once again, everyone. My name is Scott Sakura. This is The Beardcaster. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out my website, thebeardcaster.com. And that's all I got for you. So we shall check you out next week. And thank you, everyone. And ciao.